Hey everyone, this is Phil the Laptop Computer Channel on YouTube. Welcome back. I'm here to share my experience and give back to the stock investing and trading community one video at a time. So I cover market cycles, stocks, ETFs. I use technical analysis, um, trade entry, trade management, risk management, and how to create confidence by putting <clears throat> the odds in your favor. So good luck. Here's the email contact for me, laptoptraderphil at gmail.com. Or you can comment on the videos below. Caution, most stock traders lose money. Please protect yourself at all times. Nothing discussed in this video is trading or investing advice. This channel is for informational purposes only. Please seek qualified help if you need help. Thanks for watching. Uh, we've got our September 2023 agenda. And we're going to be taking a look at a market overview. And uh, a review of maybe a few charts from last month. Actually, at the end, I'm going to go through over um, over 100 charts this month we're going to take a look at. So I've got a list set up for you guys for that. Then we're going to have a discussion topic. Why is the transition from employment to being an investor so tough? Several slides on that topic this month. Um, good trading is like good driving. And then I've got a basic layout of my trading style or my basic plan. Um, I'm going to cover a service that I use, Bar Chart. Uh, they've got a new service on there that's um, kind of like a novice level. So they have three levels of service now. We'll cover that real quick. Um, I got a new writing tablet tool with a pen. So now I hope that makes it easier for me to draw. While I'm talking, save some time. Um, then I have just a quick review from last month of three basic rules to limit your risk on trading. And then possible idea for a student program for 2024. Um, I would go into the next year. I could see some time available for one to three uh, students which would be, you know, kind of more of a one-on-one -on -one type thing through video, email, chat, whatever. And uh, maybe it'll help you set up your trading plan for 2024. So that's what's coming up. Always looking ahead. Uh, I just wrote down YouTube channels of interest this month, just stuff I'm interested in that, you know, people I appreciate and people that uh, I have learned from on YouTube that I find credible. Um, Lee Lowell on YouTube, and he's got his own website at thesmartoptionseller.com. I find him uh, very informative. Uh, then we've got Scanner Danner, who's, uh, I've, I've, I used to work on cars, and I, I still do occasionally, but uh, Scanner Danner is, some really uh, next level diagnostic uh, work on these modern cars, which I think, you know, if you guys ever want to watch something interesting, watch a few of his basic videos. Um, just about what it takes to be a, a mechanic here in the uh, 21st century. A real interesting channel. Uh, then sometimes I watch these old nature videos on this old video too, which were from, I don't know if they're from the 80s or 90s when they're from, but that. If you ever have a hard time falling asleep, that is, <laughs> that's kind of one that's good to watch. Uh, Company Man focuses on companies and why they are or are not successful. That's a real interesting channel about how to maybe evaluate companies, look at the, you know what's really going on, maybe behind the scenes or some of the fundamentals about companies and how you know something that was successful may not be so successful today or they have to uh, you know reinvent themselves so customers come back pretty interesting channel and then master trader excellent free weekly videos and subscription service so that's one of my favorites in the trading community review of three basic rules to limit risk up front before you ever push the button account size does not matter and your involvement in any other area besides being an investor or a trader does not matter. But uh, just real quick, have a trading plan, limit your position size, and um, 
use a stop loss to further limit risk. Okay, so I'll leave that up there for a few minutes. Take a drink and you guys can read through that. Uh, again, these are for review. We've got the four market stages. Different names that you'll hear in the media about the four stages. Uptrends, downtrends, sideways trends, distribution, consolidations, fear, greed. This is all they're all talking about these stages in the market. Four market stages in reverse. So this is all review from my previous videos. This guys trading is repetitive, so that's why I keep putting these up here. How to read a candlestick. I'll leave this here. Five or ten seconds. That way you can always pause or take a screenshot. I'm going to look over these slides. What is a pivot? That's just a diagram I made of what is a pivot. Pivot high and a pivot low. This is my basic buy setup. I call it a three bar turn. And I've shown many examples of that. We'll see if we locate any this month when we go over the chart review. This would be how we would enter if we had a buy setup. Where we, where we could enter, where we could place our stop. Now let's get into this month's topic. Why is the transition from an employee to an, being an investor so tough? And I don't know of anybody that's done that in one step um, because they're just to two totally different thought processes. And if you're an employee, you know, you should be an investor at the same time anyway through your uh, retirement plan at your work. So but I'm talking about transitioning from really an employee to being a trader in this instance or a full-time investor. You know, somebody like maybe Warren Buffett, that that's what he does. You know, he's not an employee. He's, he is an investor. So let's talk about it because most, most people have a tough time with this. So. I think the main reason is lack of financial education and the understanding there are different rules for the game. In general, finance education, even at the university level, is lacking for personal finance and investment. So when you go to even even when you go to university, a high-level degree is probably going to get you a really good job. And then maybe in the future you could own your own business. So I used to, a while back, listen to a radio program called Money Talk with Bob Bricker. It was very popular on the weekend. So I listened to that when I was driving. And he had a recommended reading list. And callers would regularly comment that his recommended books were like a university study course of the market. So I found that kind of eye-opening. that um, Because the people that called in were not dumb and they had some wealth. They would call and ask questions like, gee, what should I do now that I've reached this level of wealth? You know, and he would just kind of talk to him about it a little bit. But um, many people called and saying they had went to university for even finance or investment or, or they had worked at banks. And that his, um, his reading list was like a, um, you know, almost like a university course in the market. So I, that's just how lacking information is through our education system. So I think that's what makes it the transition so tough because we're all kind of coached to one degree or another to being more of an employee. So the employee quadrant is, you know, it's the largest quadrant. That's where the, what most people do. You either work for a business or an investor and you earn wages or salary. And you're generally classified as a W-2 employee or something like that around the world. 
next biggest quadrant would be the small business quadrant where you can work for yourself or own or operate a business or a system for money like a franchise. So I just listed some more famous franchises there like Sport Clips, CarX, McDonald's, um, real estate agents work for themselves, contractors, right? And that is somebody that would be more of a 1099 uh, contractor or employee. Um, and then there's the big business, the area of big business, right? You own the system of business, usually very large, and uh, it's a duplicated or repeated system of doing things over and over again for money. Um, I think of large companies like General Mills, Ford, Dollar General, McDonald's, Chick-fil-A, MGM, casinos, Costco, big railroads, you know, these big systems that generate a lot of money. Finally, there's another, the last quadrant is the investor quadrant, which is probably the smallest. You know, a pure investor is very pretty rare. I would say even more rare than, a, you know, like a famous sports athlete, somebody that's made it to that level, like a famous uh, basketball player, football player or something. There's really, there really is very few full-time successful investors. And it's almost an area of mystery. Um, when you come into that quadrant, um, you know, you, you're expected to know what you're doing and, and act like an adult. They're not, you know, there's no babysitting in the investor quadrant. But they basically invest in businesses or systems or real estate or stocks in other areas to earn money with money. So looking, they're looking for something different. They're looking for a return on capital or a return on investment, you know, which is initial is ROC or ROI, and then they duplicate that or repeat that process. Um, now you can work for an investment company in Wall Street or other areas around the world. You can be a trader. Uh, you can be an investment advisor. You know, something like uh, an Edward Jones, which I believe is a franchise. And you can be a retail investor, or uh, you can have investment in a 401k or a pension. Um, you can work at Vanguard or Citigroup. You know, those are two big investment companies. Famous investors are people like Warren Buffett, Carl Icahn, Stan Weinstein, Jim Simons is a very famous uh, trader. Um, hedge funds would also be considered investors or, or large investment companies. So that's just a few areas that uh, you know you can go in within that quadrant. And then this is just how I look at you know what if you were to look at a visual of what I'm talking about, this is what it would kind of look like. Total credit on this to Robert Kiyosaki for writing the book. Um, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, and Cash Flow Quadrant, which were, I think, his two best books. But you can see the transition from left to right is different, right? So on the left side, you get your employee or your self-employed or your small business operator. That's where most people will earn their income. Most will either work for money or own a small business and work for money. Well, on the right side, you try to get your money working for you. And the terms are different, the vocabulary is different. Um, two main words for investor would be risk and return. Um, a main word for maybe like the, the big business system would be like the big idea, like Amazon was a big idea that you know very few people saw just how big that could go. So the big idea, I think, that's what I think of when I think of the big business system. And I would say, I don't know if this is accurate, but on the right side of the quadrant, you're probably talking about full-time either owners or investors or shareholders in these big companies that don't work for money. It's probably five to 10%. And that might even be too much. So it's a much rarer area of um, success 
and first is the left side. Now you can be successful in any quadrant. I'm not trying to say that I don't feel successful as an employee. I do. But I'm also an investor and, and a stock trader. So I thought that that would just be the focus this month. I think there's four things needed to, to succeed on the right side, such as commitment, discipline. I think you're going to need some, some basic analytical skills and a lot of patience to follow an approach or a strategy because most ideas and most businesses fail to succeed and stay in business. That's just the truth. So that is full quadrants of income. Think about it. Um, how many employees are really committed or even have discipline? You know, how many people um, show up to work on time, try to do their best, you know, and have discipline to do that? How many employees even think while they're doing their job about what they're doing? And how many people just don't have patience to wait? You know? So th that's why I think it's kind of tough to transfer to the right side. So again, in the investor and quadrant, we have some different terms such as risk and reward and return on investment or ROI. Um, the vocabulary and communicating is different. Terms of business are different. Defining, defining success and how to achieve a reward or a level of accomplishment is different. Um, the good thing is on the right side, repeatable and scalable, you can start small and you can grow or scale up. So that's a huge plus in my opinion. Uh, normally you're going to be on your own and most investors or traders develop a style or a way of investing. Um, you're able to have partners, you're able to borrow capital, uh, and you're able to grow uh, a business or investment. You can generate in enough income for your level of freedom, whatever that level is. And in fact, I would argue that the lower your level of freedom, the easier it should be to generate that income. You know, it's much easier to generate, let's say, I think the average wage in the country now, if you're working full time, is somewhere around 45000 a year. It's easier, easier to generate that than it is to generate you know, a big income like $300,000 a year or something like that. So don't be shy if you don't have a bunch of income. It doesn't matter. But you're going to need to self-educate. This is not taught in grade school, high school, community college, or university, or even on your broker platform. So it's going to take some, some study. There are books and courses for online education. This uh, video series on YouTube is my course. Um, I've recommended books and other channels for you guys to watch I think are relevant. There's also many bad operators looking to sell you something with the promise of um, get rich quick. Okay, so use caution in that area. Um, there's also something called an accredited investor, if you've never heard of that, where you have to have qualifications <clears throat> like income and assets. And you actually get access to the best uh, investments, such as IPOs, um, things like private lending, startup companies. Um, and then there's private companies or family businesses versus what I trade in, which is publicly traded companies listed on the exchange. So not all companies are public. <clears throat> and as you're driving around town, most companies are not public. Excuse me. Anyway, it's just a different area of being an investor or investing to make money is going to require some different skills than the other areas. I think this is why so many investors and stock traders fail because they fail to recognize the transition from where they are at today. So that was kind of this month's topic. Let's move on. And in my thought process, good trading is like good driving. You, you should have a plan before you go on a trip or before you enter a trade. And you should be unemotional about the steps needed 
to reach your goal. So when I first started driving professionally, I was not exposed to this. I was kind of thrown in the truck with somebody and we didn't really follow this. And I went to a different company and then we, that's where I learned this out. There's five basic rules, um, which are get the big picture. What's the context at this time? Is it clear, rainy, hot and dry or cold and wet? What's the traffic light? What is um, the time of day or night? And then aim high in steering. You know, you need to look up and out, not down at your phone. You need to pay attention. Keep your eyes moving to look for potential problems. And then make sure that they see you. So you need to communicate with your lights and um, signals. Make sure your brake lights are working, stuff like that. Um, and then leave yourself an out in case of unforeseen events, which happens every day, right? So today's modern traffic is... Kind of crazy. And to make it through that, you need to have a plan. And to make it through the stock market, you're going to need to have a plan. So here's just a quick outline of my basic approach to the markets and how I use stock selection. Um, first of all, what is the overall market trend or stage? And what is the context of the economy, right? Get the big picture. I use technical analysis to do that. You can use that too if you want. There's different ways of looking at that, but this is my approach. So what is the company or stock trend at this time? Or what is what stage is the market or the company in that you're looking at? Is it up, down, or sideways, right? Get the big picture. Put stocks of interest on a list. That's what I do every week, every month. Keep your eyes moving, right? Aim high in steering. Use multiple time frames. This is a key point because you'll see stuff on these larger time frames that will help you make decisions. So I'll, I generally look at a monthly, weekly, and a daily time frame. You can go lower if you want. But that's, again, aiming high and steering. Keep your eyes moving. Watch and wait for the right time. So we need to keep an eye out for earnings, what's going on with the economy, what season are we in. Uh, we need to look for a technical setup we're comfortable with or um, even a fundamental analysis that we're comfortable with. I generally use a breakout or a buy setup, which I call, again, my three-bar turn. Or I use options like a covered call strategy to create income from our holdings. You know, for that, you're going to need at least 100 shares per contract to do that. So that's probably more advanced if you're new. And then before we ever enter a trade, I need to do some math and calculate um, using price levels or pivots, you know, what is my potential risk and reward using charts. So I always look for a good ratio or a potential profit level. If I risk, for example, if I risk $1 per share, I'm going to at least look for a dollar in return. Preferably at least a two to one ratio or much more if I'm willing to hold on to the trade or the investment for a longer period of time. Um, and then we must stick to our risk amounts, whatever your plan says, right? 10 bucks for new, for new traders or higher if you have experience. When we are in an active open trade, now we need to use trade management to protect our hard-earned capital. Stop loss is um, the tool that I use for that. You know, is price moving the way we expected? If price moves rapidly or in a climactic fashion and we have a profit, sell part of the position for an early profit and keep a few shares as a core investment for free. I do that quite a bit. So always leave yourself an out. Use Risk management, use um, stop loss. And calculate that stuff before you ever push the button. And then finally, I decide when to exit for a profit or a loss. And then repeat these steps. So that's just kind of my basic approach to how I go about um, choosing my investments. And uh, here is um, 
I wanted to share this with you guys because this is the, one of the services that I use outside of my broker, barchart.com. They have uh, three levels. Uh, you can either have a basic membership for free. Um, and uh, once you sign up, there's no advertisement. So that's really nice that they change that. There's no expiration on that. Or a bar chart plus, which is new, uh, which is less than 10 bucks a month. So I think that's really um, something nice they did there. And I'm a bar chart premier member myself because I use it all the time. And that is, I think, pay somewhere around 24 bucks a month for that. I pay by the year. So they've got something for anybody there, and I think it's um, a valuable service. It's a huge website, huge site. And they've got everything from stocks to uh, you know, news, options. They've got futures information, ETF information. So it's just, I don't use anything. Um, I'm, I shouldn't say anything. I don't use the majority of that site. I'll put it that way. I use what I use on it, and I make my decisions from there. So if I find something like that, I share with you guys. I have no skin in the game on that. It's just something that I use. So check it out. So let's get to the end of our presentation, and let's look at some charts. Let's get our brains working and practice at uh, stock or market ETF selection. So at the end of the presentation, we're going to look at some live charts now. And hopefully, this pen tool is working. I just pulled up a watch list for you guys. And uh, I think that, you know, that's full screen. So here's a watch list, right? I've got over 100 names on this list. We're just, I'm going to go through it very quickly. You guys are welcome to stick around as I go through it. And we'll just kind of decide quickly what stage we're in, what's the trend. And we're going to go, I think I'm going to start with probably a monthly chart. So I just use this feature, this flip chart feature. Right now it's on a three-month chart. So let's just start there and we'll see. You know, so on this three-month chart, right, what is the what is the trend? And, you know, overall, we can see from left to right, if we look over here, this candle closed here at about 115. Well, three months later, we're actually a little bit lower. So even though the red lines, the three moving averages are pointing up, the red line is 100 period average. This blue line is um, 20 period average, and the green line is a 50 period moving average. Even though those three are kind of pointed up right now, um, it's not a very strong trend, in my opinion. And it's, in fact, the trend's in question, the uptrend is in question. So let's go out and let's take a look at um, what would this look like here? We used a weekly chart. So that was a daily chart. Let's look at the weekly chart real quick. And now what does the trend look like to you guys? It looks a little bit different, right? If we go down, we can see um, two moving averages. I use a 10 and a 30 period moving average on this weekly chart. You can see some huge volume spikes over here. Right over here. Look at the size of that volume. That's uh, 18 million on volume on average. This stock's doing, I don't know, a couple million in volume, three million volume a day for a week. <clears throat> and all of a sudden, we got two weeks with really big volume. To me, that signals um, that this stock is in demand right now. Even though on the daily chart, it looks like the trend is a little bit in question, but to me, that says. Um, Wall Street wants to is buying this company, not wants to, they are buying this company. And um, the only thing that would change that is if next week there was a lot of selling. It looks to me like this is being accumulated. We've got on this weekly chart, we've got this pivot, right? We've got this area over here. 
which was a pivot, and then you got these other pivots, and it's just going up slowly. So this is not a fast moving stock. Um, and this could be something that, you know, could be a potential for a trade, right? And when we look to the left over here, so this is two years of information, the highest point in the last two years is over here at around 120. And right now the stock closed the week at 114.23. So that would be kind of my first target. This red candle here, the top of that, would be somewhere around 120. So 114.23 to 120 is what? 575 potential upwards movement if it moves up. And then after that, if it does have a nice move up, my next target would be up here at the top of this pivot, somewhere around 122, 123 maybe, somewhere in there. So this gives a decent um, reward. So what would be the risk? Well, we this weekly chart, let's say our stop was underneath this candle somewhere. Let's say it's 111 or 11150 or something like that. So we'd have about... A three dollar risk, give or take, for a potential reward of, you know, five to six bucks. So that's not too bad. So that kind of meets some of my criteria. So then, if I was going to look at this for an actual entry, I would take this trend that it's in right now. It's in roughly a stage two trend on this larger time frame, and I would go down. Okay, let's say we go down here back. To this daily three month time frame right there and now i'm going to look for a setup i'm either going to look for a breakout in combination with my buy setup or just the buy setup itself and even though this chart doesn't look great i think you know i'm sorry about that Even though this chart doesn't look real positive on the daily chart because prices come down below this longer term moving average, it did close above that on Friday. It had a range expansion bar on Friday on volume. So most of the volume came on Friday. And um, after we had earnings, we had some consolidation that sold off. So this one is kind of in a tough area. And I don't know if I would buy this here. I would consider it if on Monday we had um, a candle that maybe opened up here and kind of closed above all of this. Then I would say, yeah, that would give me more confidence, in other words, to uh, take a trade. Because then I could see, okay, this buying volume here is real, right? And buyers are not backing down and sellers are not pushing back. That would tell me that you know we're kind of in this transition back into this uptrend, which has been pretty strong this year. So let's see if I can draw a candle here that maybe would help you guys out. Um, let's see if we can use this. Yeah, we'll use this. We'll use a green candle. Oops. Still getting used to this uh, thing. Still getting used to this new tool. But so I would just look for a candle here, like you know, something like this. Nice big fat green candle here on Monday. You know, if we saw something like that, you know, and then I would probably put in an order on mo late Monday or Tuesday to buy over that and try to catch the move up, something like that. Okay, that's what I would be looking for on that specific chart. So let's now speed it up, right? Let's speed up our analysis. Actually, not sure how to get rid of that menu. Anyway, 
So now we're going to go back to we'll go back to the longer term time frame and we'll just start looking for other opportunities. So this is going to be we'll go through quite a few charts here. And that was S FISV Fiserv company. So we're just going to stick on this longer term weekly chart, start going through different companies. So Fiserv looks, you know, a, a possible opportunity going uh, into the end of the year. Let's take a look at another one. Garmin Limited. That looks, so you guys can see how that looks different, right? The stage looks different versus Fiserv. This stage looks more like um, stage one that's transitioned into an early stage two, maybe. So if I was looking to buy Garmin, I would, you know, just do some more homework. Um, the volume shows uh, accumulation overall from institutions. This is not um, a fast moving stock, but as you can see here, back in October of 22, it closed just under uh, $80, $79.44. So now, you know, 11 months later, we're at 106. So that would be a nice gain, right, as an investor. So it doesn't take much to start earning a return on your investments if, if you choose wisely using charts. Let's go next. Symbol IMVT. Again, this looks like a different uh, picture than the previous two. This looks, um, first of all, it's a lower cost stock. Second of all, we had a downtrend, which transitioned to a very strong uptrend on volume with a large, you know, green range expansion candle. And it, the stock simply has not looked back since that happened. This happened around the 575 area. And today it's trading at $23.99. So stock, the actual price of the stocks many times doesn't matter that much because you can see um, this would give you a real nice percentage return even though the dollar amount invested may be relatively small. So if you bought 100 shares at 575 or let's say 580, you know, you'd have less than 600 bucks into an investment that in a relatively short period of time since, um, again, since last October, you, know, you basically had almost a, uh, a four bagger, you know, or 400%, just under 400%. And it looks to me like it's not really showing a lot of signs of slowing down. There is some signs that momentum has stalled with this topping tail candle, the sell-off, and then another topping tail candle, and then a sell-off. So there is some more sellers present now, but it hasn't dropped that much, really. And um, on Friday, again, for the week, nice closing green candle. So buyers are still present. That one looks pretty good to me, especially for uh, you know, if you're looking for some, for more growth versus income. That's a, that's a possibility. Uh, let's see. Cars is the electric vehicle ETF. So this is an ETF that um, focuses on electric vehicles and mobility. Again, what's what stage are we in? We're in clearly um, a late, late stage four downtrend and um, more of a stage one at this point where you just have this back and forth, right? You just have, you know, since, oh, what, what did I just do there?
Anyway, I'm still getting used to that pen. It's kind of sensitive. <laughs> um, anyway, it's just been going back and forth like this, right? And you can just see there's this is a company right now you're not going to get, or I mean an ETF, you're not going to get immediate price appreciation, right? Because it's in the sideways back and forth trend. Can you guys see that? It's just kind of going up and down, top of the range, bottom of the range. It's in the same range it was in last year, right? Top of the range, bottom of the range, top of the range, bottom. So it's in this back and forth um, area. And, um, you know, so if that's something you wanted to invest in based on other factors besides the chart, that's okay. Just understand the stage you're in that these sideways trends can last for a long time. So, you know, you would not want to commit a lot of money to something in a sideways trend. But um, if it's something you have other reasons to invest in, you could choose maybe an option strategy. And um, that's kind of something I want to cover this month, but I don't think we're going to have time. So maybe next month we'll get to selling put options. But this is something that would kind of, if you want to create income, maybe an option strategy would be more appropriate. Or keep it on your list and watch for some stronger price appreciation. So we're just trying to judge the trend. Let's get the next one. I'm just gonna speed up now a little bit because I don't want this video to go on for too long. And I hope you guys appreciate the charts. But again, this is still in a late stage uh, one. It looks like it's transitioning to an uptrend stage two. This chart actually looks pretty good. From that point of view where you can see we had this long long bottoming pattern consolidation for months now we had a igniting candle a pullback and then another igniting candle last week so this is a weekly chart and you can see how that this buy setup looks on a weekly chart so when i'm looking for my buy setup that's, you know, it happens on all time frames. But here it is right here. You got the first candle. You got a second candle that's lower. And then the third, the third candle is kind of an igniting candle over all of this, right? It closed over all of this stuff. So it's a very powerful message that this company may be on the move up. So let's, if I was going to buy this, the weekly chart looks good. Let's go down to the daily chart. And that looks pretty good too, right? So these two time frames match. So that's a match. And you can see here the consolidation, the consolidation, the consolidation, and boom, earnings came out. Next day, you have this big igniting candle, and then you had kind of this consolidation through price. And down here, we had this turn up. Now that's not a clear example of the of my buy setup, but it is still a buy setup. And um, it's just not as clear as I would like on a daily chart, but it's very, very strong. There's not, um, you don't see any overlapping candles. You see a open and close, and the next day open and close higher, open and close. So it's just, it's in this uptrend, and it closed above all this. So it's not a bad place to buy that company. And all three moving averages are pointing up. So that's another indication that this should continue higher. It's got a lot of momentum right now. And that's one that uh, I would definitely consider. You know, that's that kind of meets a lot of my criteria. Let's go back to the weekly chart. Go back to two, two year weekly. I used to have a three year weekly, now I've changed that to a two. No particular reason, but so that's that. So that would be on the weekly chart, very early transition, right? From stage four downtrend back to a consolidation. Now an early, early on the weekly chart, stage two uptrend. But let's take a look at maybe some of the profit potential, right? So let's say you did buy over this candle at 
25 or 3330, what's the potential? Got a little bit of resistance here, but I don't think that would, um, you know, with the momentum being pretty strong like it is, I don't, I think it's just going to go right through that. Our next pivot on this weekly chart or area of interest would be just up here, right at the tops of these four candles, right in this area around 36. 68 maybe 3670 so that would give you you know over three dollar reward and our stop this wouldn't be our stop under this weekly candle but it would be a less than a three dollar stop so that would at least be one to one up to here and on the daily chart you could tighten up your stop more than that so that's not a bad idea let's keep moving on KR Kroger Company, right sideways trend. That's a pretty big company. If I had owned 100 shares in that, I would definitely be selling options to generate income at this time. Just because there's no reason to hold the stock unless it's making you money. Now they do pay a dividend, so that's another positive if you own Kroger. But it's just a uh, sideways trend. TJX Company is in a... Um, uptrend on the weekly chart so that looks good a lot of interesting uh, price action there we've got a couple of pivots there's a pivot here would be a pivot kind of a kind of a sloppy three bar turn there buy setup but then this is an interesting thing here this green red and green that's a very interesting area that uh, would have been a great area to buy over that. That often indicates that there was buyers. Sellers tried to sell this stock and then right away buyers said, nope, we're taking this higher. So that's a great indication. And that's called a, um, I call it a three bar sandwich. That works both directions. What else do we got here? We've got Unum Provident Corp. I don't recognize that name, but that's, Pretty clear uptrend still. This is a some kind of biotech company that doesn't look very good. That looks lower. Uh, real cheap stock. That's probably one that would I wouldn't consider. It's just too cheap. It's going down. That's probably not doing very good. I'm surprised that's still on the list. Lacos Corp. G K O S. That looks good. That looks um, like it's making. They had a nice move up. Now it's kind of making this kind of rounded turn. If that keeps going up, that's a possibility, right? Sometimes stocks take a rest. So this had a nice move up since May of 23. And now it's kind of consolidating through price and time. So it's getting its legs back. So that's a possibility. We've got uh, Mara. Digital Corp, that is still sideways trend. Pegs, Pegs Giro Digital, sideways trend, right? PLTR Palantir, that is in a fairly new uptrend on the weekly chart. It did sell off recently after earnings, but if that turns back up, that's a possibility. Rem, Remitly Global, I don't recognize that, but it's on my list. That looks like a fairly new uptrend. Um, that looks like a continuation pattern up. We had a, an igniting candle, right? Then we had four weeks where it just kind of drifted higher. So it's not a bad time to buy and then try to catch the next large candle going up. Again, I use these weekly charts as, as my basis for kind of like my first um, sort. And then I'll go down to a daily chart. I'll put some of these I'm interested in on daily chart and try to time my entries using the daily charts. Soleno Therapeutics. That's in a kind of a weak uptrend, I would say. Fairly cheap stock, just under five bucks. 
But that could be a possibility for someone. I would say any any biotech, I caution you guys, any biotech, watch your risk. The, most of these companies don't make money. So that very important. Watch yourself in certain sectors of the market, especially biotech and something like IPOs. Generally, don't make money and don't do very good the first few years. So again, that we are going back to our risk rules, right? That uh, just watch what you're doing. Uh, Perry Company, who I had invested in earlier this year, had a major sell-off, and now it's kind of made a little bit of a turn up, not much, but it's still consolidating. This one was or is profitable. I'd have to verify that, but that's definitely a company I'd like to get back in when uh, the chart turns up. ETN Eaton Corp has got a um, very strong uptrend this year. Look at that uptrend where it was kind of going sideways, this back and forth, right, in a range. And then since April has been like straight up and still closed this week higher. That's incredible uh, price action for, uh, especially in this market. So that's something that Wall Street um, obviously places a lot of value in this company. They really like that. Um, there's only really, you know, in this chart, there's only really one, well, there's a buy set up there. There's another one here, but man, it's it's getting up towards the upper end of my comfort zone for price 233.67. But that's a more expensive stock that very strong. ETN Corp. ADM. Um, that's more of a commodity company. It deals with corn and beans and stuff like that. But overall, big gigantic sideways trend. Look at that. I went down and up. Back to the top of the range, back down to the bottom of the range, and it turned up. So this is one that, you know, I would consider a buy set up here if we had one. This is pretty smooth price action on this weekly chart, this pullback. This is very smooth pullback. I like that. Where the candles aren't too big, you know, each candle is kind of sequential like that. So then if we got that turn there, I would look to enter ADM. I like that, <clears throat> excuse me, I like that company a lot. So we've got that. <clears throat> what else we got? Varex. In kind of a decent uptrend. Um, not as strong as ETN, but this one to me, just looking at it, looks a little more volatile. Like all the candles look kind of big. Well, that's not the smoothest stock, but recently it looks pretty good. It's at the top of the range, um, but that would be one to consider as far as if I owned 100 shares here, I would definitely consider selling a call, a covered call over, over whatever, 24, 26. But if it continues higher, I would consider just a straight out stock purchase. If it pulled back here, if it started to go back into, you know, towards the bottom of the range, then I would consider selling something like a cash secured put. So that's kind of how you could use that chart. BBH is an ETF of biotechs. I personally prefer to use ETFs in a volatile space like biotechs simply because you got your risk spread out more across several companies. <clears throat> And I think you get a good value with ETFs where you get a lot of companies that, you know, if you get one or two that really move on for you, it can really pull the whole ETF up. And, you you know, for 165 bucks a share, you get exposure to kind of more of a, a dangerous area. But this still, is this still on a side of big, fat, sideways trend, right? That's easy to see. BMI, Badger Meter. This is one that um, I was looking at this back here in March and April. And sometimes in investing and trading, one of the toughest things is we all have limited capital. And sometimes you get into investments 
that um, are performing for you at the time, right? Or are just going sideways and not really accelerating as fast as you wanted. So you have your capital tied up. At the same time, you're looking at all these other companies and you don't have any extra capital or room in your trading plan to add to your positions, right? So this is one that I was on, definitely on my list. I've been watching it through this consolidation and I wish I would have got in here because that would have been a great game. Can you guys see that? If you got in at, you know, over this area here at like 124, 125, how you could have um, over $20 per share profit by now in um, you know four four months so that's one of the toughest things about trading is maintaining your discipline not to just buy everything and stick with what you have until you take profits or you take a loss or you decide you know what i'm gonna get out of this it's not moving right now let's look for something else so in my plan i have a limit on how many positions I can have open at any one time. So unfortunately, this is one that I missed, even though it's on my list, and I did consider buying it. But you can only own so much. Um, Burford Capital. Yeah, and you can see downtrend and then igniting into this uptrend. So this went, this was kind of a, Stage one, but a scary stage one because if, if you saw these red candles here, so if you saw the sell off, that is fear. And then for that to turn around and just go up, that's that's incredible price action. Um, and right now, it doesn't look like a bad area, right? It actually looks like an, a decent, um, a very small buy setup on this weekly chart. So that's a lower price stock. I don't know the company. But that's one that I would probably take a look to maybe a daily chart for an entry or consider it. You know, it definitely has some attributes I like, like volume and it's not a very expensive stock. But that could maybe be some more homework. Move that to a different list. That's what I'll do. So I'll take this. Let's say I'm interested in that. This is how I use bar chart. I've got these different watch lists. So that's on next month's list, which would be. It was on a list from either June, July, or August, and now it's made it to September. Now I would move this to maybe this week's list. See how I did that? So what was next month's list is now this month. So I'll just put that on this week's list to watch. So that's how I use bar chart to sort and segregate companies that I'm interested in, right? Let's continue on. Tiva, downtrend. No interest. CF, um, downtrend, possible early transition, right? Possible uh, pivot, consolidation, red bar ignored. So that's a possibility for September CF company. See if that um, shows any more strength. So again, I would just take that from the monthly list to the weekly list. And then I'd keep an eye on that this week on a daily chart. So that's kind of how I use bar chart. And then if I'm interested in options, they have some options information, or I go to my broker, right? Uh, DG Dollar General in a really nasty downtrend right now. That stock had some uh, positive attributes throughout last year, and now this year it's really taken a hit. So this would be an example of why. We limit our risk up front, why we um, limit our risk per trade, and why we use stop losses, right? Imagine owning Dollar General like from, let's say, two years ago, closing price of uh, 218, and now today it's a, a 130 a share. That's, you know, that's a pretty big hit. You know, that's a serious hit to your, not only your account, but to your emotions and your ego. And Dollar General is a fine company. I don't know why it sold off, but the fact is when we look at charts, it has sold off. That's the fact. So you have to take that into account in your uh, investment. Also, I have Dollar Tree, similar, right? Similar industry, also selling off. You know, if anything, that's a short idea. You like the short stocks, there's a short idea. Uh, 
Antelope Enterprise. I don't know why that's on my list, but that looks lower. <clears throat> CLRO, clear one. That's kind of uh, looked good until it didn't. I had a really nasty sell-off after earnings last time. If that can make the turn up, and if uh, it's a cheap stock, if they're profitable, that's something I would consider, just because it's so cheap. And if um, if it's a money maker, that's one to consider. I don't know the company, but clear one looks like it's possibly bottoming out, maybe making the turn up on a weekly chart. That that wouldn't take a whole lot of investment for, to um, get involved in that. But it's it, the thing about these large candles too. You now this was climactic up and then climactic down. It kind of came back down to earth, right? Well. Doesn't necessarily mean it's going out of business, but it's just like it was overpriced. And now it's back down to being either fair valued or underpriced or whatever. Oversold, however you want to look at it. And now it's starting to turn up. So for 89 cents, you know, 100 shares would only cost you 89 bucks if other factors apply. Like earnings that reported it lost 4 cents a share on August 10th. See here, it reported it lost nine cents a share on May 16th. So it's actually improved earnings a little bit. You know, an improvement from losing nine cents a share to losing four cents a share, that's an improvement, right? Um, back here, it lost two cents a share. So it's a company that doesn't make money. I don't know what industry it's in, but maybe some more homework on that one for you guys. If you're looking for cheaper stocks. Amazon is um, nice, kind of slow, steady uptrend this year. Possible buy setup on this weekly chart. You know, you're looking to get an Amazon. If you think Amazon is going to continue higher, this is not a terrible time to get involved there. Again, it wasn't a terrible time to get involved earlier in the year either, or it was at uh, you know just under 100 bucks. Now it's at 138, so not a bad idea. Oracle has been very strong this year also. Recently has pulled back in price. Looks like this week closed with a green range expansion bar, so that looks higher. Oracle Corp. So you, I think you guys can see this list is pretty diverse. I'm not just sticking to penny stocks. I'm not just sticking to um, all the well-known names either. <clears throat> I'll, you know, I'll look for anything in, in between. The area I'm most comfortable with is um, for sure stocks under like 400 bucks, but under 50 bucks, I'm extremely comfortable uh, with stocks. I, it wasn't always that way. This one is in a fairly new uptrend but that trend is in question on this one a lot of red candles a lot of selling on that right now netflix obviously the most popular most widely used streaming service um there's definitely competition in that space now though so um, you wonder about with all the free services out there you know can they continue to hold on to their subscribers not a cheap stock, 439 a share. Um, that's kind of out of my range of comfort, but Netflix, still an uptrend. Tesla, um, still kind of in an uptrend. Uh, definitely had a sell off after recent earnings. Um, I don't know, I don't like that candle considering a lot of stuff I've already looked at. Had nice large green range expansion candles this week tesla is showing what's called like a doji candle or where it was up and then it got sold off so to me that is in no man's land i wouldn't consider tesla at this time this chart is, is a picture of uncertainty um you could just see the back and forth and first it's red for a couple weeks on screen now we're back red so i don't know that's an Big fat range. <clears throat> really not something I'm interested in. 
Looks like it has earnings and pays dividends, so maybe that's a positive. Looks like it's towards the bottom of the range, so maybe if you're looking for value, that would be a consideration. I don't know the company. Abbott Laboratories, symbol ABT, that is in more of a stage one sideways range. Again, if you're more of a value person or you look for stocks with earnings and dividends, that's not a bad time to buy towards the bottom of the range. If that could turn up, that could be a positive. Um, could have early, you know, pretty easy gain on that one. UPS recently sold off in a giant range again. It's towards the bottom of the range. That's another one that a lot of people like because it pays such a nice dividend. Bottom of the range on UPS. KC Company in a uh, kind of a, you know, it's in an uptrend, but kind of a weak uptrend right now. That one is um, kind of in between. I don't know if I would consider that right now, but that's a pretty strong company. They do a great job. Generac, that's a pretty clear stage one, right? Let's see if that has any uh, momentum up or down. That's just a watch. GNK, Genko Sip Shipping. Um, I think it sold off this year, whereas a lot of the market has went up, so this would be relative weakness. Genco shipping. Bottom of the range, bottom you know, of a sideways trend. Uh, again, that has earnings and dividends. I think that's on the list because that pays a really big dividend. So if you like dividends, that's I don't you probably I wouldn't expect a lot of price appreciation on that one. Oh, logic. Looks like a new downtrend, possibly. I think it failed to bounce towards, back up towards the top of the range and had a sell off after earnings, so that looks lower. Into it company. Uh, again, that's a pretty strong company that's been around for a while that had a long consolidation. Uh, not a cheap stock. It's had a couple um, buying opportunities like here. It's kind of one that's not real strong, but right here is a great one. Went sideways and then kind of bounced up right there around the 450 area. And it's at five, almost 550. So well, that's not a cheap stock. But hey, remember this: if you have the capital to buy into something like this, successful company, big company, you know, not a cheap stock. If you think about the potential in real dollars between you know, this, the bottom of that candle or the top of that, whatever, it's, it broke out, right? It broke out over all this stuff. So the potential, even though it's 550 a share roughly, think about the potential on this pivot up here. Back up to 700 bucks. So that's why a lot of people like higher price stocks because the actual dollars are, are there if you want them. So if this is... Your comfort area, I really like into it right here. It's out of my comfort area, but it's probably in my mutual funds anyway. I'm not worried about it. I'm 99% sure I've got exposure to it. But as a stock trader, if you're not shy, that looks pretty good. That chart looks pretty good. <clears throat> That's a uh, breakout trade. Manhattan Associates also looks decent. I would say recently made a new high about six weeks ago. Kind of pulled back and now closing wheat green. That one looks <clears throat> decent, $201 stock. MDB. Also consolidated for a while, sold off, and then was bought up into earnings this week. Um, if that close above all this right this week that's that would be like a continuation or a upward momentum trade mdb again not a cheap stock 392 a share mili company mercado libre that's that's kind of what if 
if you could put that candle on this chart, that's what you're looking for, right? See how this candle at the end of the week is kind of an in-between candle with the top and tail and bottom tail? If you could get this candle on that chart, that's what you're looking for, okay? And if you think sometimes like, well, how high can a stock go? They, they can go to any level up to the sun. This is a, this stock opened the week around $1,200, right? Just over $1,200, it closed the week at $1,421. Think about that in real um, dollar amounts. That's, that's some real money changing hands right there. And that looks higher, right? $1,400 share, over $1,400 share looks higher. Stocks can keep going up for higher than you think. And that was a limiting factor early in my trading. You know, how high can a stock go? Well, they can keep going, you know. And these, these setups work. This is not so strong. This looks like, um, you know, it just had a big sell-off after earnings. Came down towards the bottom of the range. Yeah, it, it looks like a three-bar turn there, but... I don't like the location of that. This is where you need to have some judgment when using a buy setup. And uh, to me, that doesn't look all that great for MGM. It could, not something I'd be really that interested in right now. But we'll keep it on the list. Meta, selling off after earnings. It had really strong year. Think about that. That was under 100 bucks, and now it's up. Almost to three hundred dollars, two ninety six a share, closing the week. Not a, you know, it makes sense that at some point it would, people would take profits, right? And I think that's what you're seeing in Meta right now: people taking profits. M H O stands for M I Homes, Home Builder. That still looks higher. You know, that looks pretty good for Home Builder. T O W L. That looks like a nice um, continuation pattern. So here we have this breakout consolidation, another real strong breakout into earnings sideways. And see how that's kind of turning off? That looks like a continuation higher, even though it looks a little bit extended. On this chart, you know, I could see this stock going up to 100 bucks, so 84 to 100, that's very possible on, on that. It is extended, but uh, using risk management, that's one I would consider. SIG, Signet Jewelers, looks like kind of a, not a bad buy setup there. Um, it's definitely towards the top of the range, but I like it because we had the sell-off and then an immediate return back to the top of the range over, I don't know, let's say about eight weeks. And it had kind of a controlled pullback. It had this range expansion candle, this red candle that was a larger candle, right? And then immediately was bought off after that into earnings. So just had earnings. I don't know what they were, but if you could get a continuation like that, kind of that drift higher, that would be one I'd be interested in because it's already had quite a bit of selling. And that looks to me more like a correction through price. And then a return to the uptrend is what that looks like to me. Supermicro computer. We've got uh, kind of an extended chart. I don't really like that there. TIO. Again, climactic both ways and then back to uh, reality. But that's one to watch. I definitely have volume this week. Look at that volume. So, symbol TIO stands for Tingo Group. I don't know what they do, but Wall Street seems to uh, like them at this price, whatever they do. So that's a possibility. VFC Corp. Still in a downtrend. Wow, this is one that was on my list earlier this year that... Um, because of this, see this volume? Sometimes you get volume, right? But you don't get the candle you're looking for. That is a sign of danger. That means even though all these shares were bought at that price, there was not the follow through in price 
a lot of volume, but no follow through. And you can see after that happened, it, it's just still in this downtrend. So VF Corp, which is um, a profitable company, is just not getting any help from the market and going higher. And uh, that's unfortunate. So again, that's still on the watch list, VFC. The VTRU is a picture of um, just back and forth right now. Had a 52 week low here back in May, and it came out of that low is consolidating. So, that if that could start to move higher, that I like that because it's showing that uh, sellers have stepped out of the way. There's not a lot of selling going on. ZIM integrated shipping. We're on a downtrend. ZYXI, still on a downtrend. CP, Canadian Pacific, is in a narrowing, um, almost a wedge pattern. I don't know if you guys can see that. I wish I could draw that. I'm not having any luck with the drawing tool, but if you could just picture a line from here going up, right, kind of touching the bottom of these uh, candles. And then if you look across the top, how oh, it's real flat. See how these pivots all stop at the same point? How that wedge is pointing up. So that's a picture of uh, buying pressure. I like that for a longer term uh, investment. Canadian Pacific EEPC looks like, uh, looks lower or at the bottom of range. FOR four star group looks like a possible buy setup on this weekly chart. Looks like uh, that's got some strength. NXGL next show looks like that looks higher. Nice closing week there. That could be some more homework. That's a cheaper stock. I don't recognize the companies or what they do. So that could be some homework for somebody. NXGL $2.50 stock. Zedge. This has been on my list for a while, still in stage one, sideways. <clears throat> Crane and XT company symbol C XT. That's in a nice uptrend. That looks higher. Rock ROK Rockwell. That looks like that had some definitely had some buying pressure and then it sold off after earnings. So uh, more expensive stock at 314. That looks like that could go back up. Kepper Corp. Big fat stage one sideways trend. Just watch right now. ALTR, Altair Engineering looks like uh, again sold off after earnings. That's kind of made this turn up, but I don't like that range expansion candle after earnings. That's just a watch. IESC. That's kind of what you're looking for when it comes to a um, breakout and continuation higher. That's why. People trade breakouts. So just think if you bought, you know, let's say you're expecting this breakout and you put an order in the system at you know, 59.25 or 59.30 or whatever, 59.50, and you catch that move higher. Think about that, 59.50 up to 76. That's a nice game, a nice quick game. And, uh, you know, you're not sitting there with a loss. You're sitting there with a game. It's a much different emotional feeling when you're sitting there with a nice game. That's why people like breakout continuation uh, moves. But that's a pretty good example of a large igniting candle into a new uh, move higher. Right now it's extended, so I'm not saying buy it now. I'm saying now what we would look for would be our buy setup. And it's probably not going to happen in the next few. It would take weeks for that to happen, right? It would have to kind of come up. Kind of sell off and maybe come back here again. Maybe we're on the 65 area. So that's one somebody can watch. IMGN. Um, I know not the best looking chart. It's kind of a, in an area that's called minor price support. That could just be a watch for now. Possibility, but a watch. ITUV. It's a big fat sideways trend. Has some buying pressure to it. 
a little bit of a wedge there, but I don't know. I'm not interested with all these. I'm not interested because the, of where it's at in these toppy tails. I don't like that. So that's the watch list. KBR Inc. Now it looks like that is making a possible turn higher on the weekly chart. Upturned. ORI looks kind of a, an area I like. So this, when you look at all these tops of these candles, you see what's called minor price support. And I like this because it came back, it had this climactic candle, came back, put in this bottomy tail, and then this week had a, you know, if, if this candle was larger, like let's say it closed up here around 27 and 28, that would be a great, I think that would be a nice buy setup on this weekly chart. It's not bad, but that would be a um, potential to at least go back up to 30, where it went before, where it made a 52-week high and then sold off. But some of that is probably earnings information. You know, a lot of stocks sell off after earnings. 10 SA and ADR. So this is a foreign company consolidating towards the top of the range. That could be a potential for a continuation pattern higher if there was a nice large green candle there. WN looks uh, Wendy's company. That looks lower. That looks like a sh more of a sell setup. Wendy's showing some relative weakness there. CI, the Cigna Group, looks like it made this big sell-off, right? This looks real close. So some stocks really follow the market. This is one that looks like it followed the market from 2022 to 2023, right? And then turned up with the market. And now it's sold off after the last, what, six weeks? So if this could turn up here, you know, that would be a, maybe a decent buy setup. If it doesn't turn up, then it's probably going back down to the bottom of the range. So that's one to watch. Not a cheap one, 276 a share, but some to watch. FCX Corp. Kind of had a nice move up, and then since then has been in a sideways trading range. Does have um, kind of this nice sequential pullback. You know, a nice three bar turn there. That's a possibility to go higher. Continue back up to at least 45 or so. That's one that's a not too bad of a price. It's not a fast moving company, but I know they're involved in copper. And as a commodity play, that would be a, an idea. FCX Corp. Like that. RB Global. Don't recognize that name, but definitely in a range. Last couple weeks has had um, some buying pressure. So that could be, uh, I don't think that'd be a good buy right now because the, the potential is not there. So the potential is only right now in the short term, 6240 up to 65, right towards the top of this double top area. And then there's some more stuff here. So um, now if that could get up to the top range and then up here, the price could move here and then move sideways for a few weeks and then move higher, that would be a potential continuation trade higher. RB Global, Apple, buy setup on Apple, but after um, maybe they had a weak earnings report, that the problem with that is even though it's a buy setup, again, your potential is only up to about 200 bucks in the short term. And the problem with this chart is what if sellers come in this week and start taking it lower from here and it turns into a downtrend. That's kind of no man's land, so I don't really like that chart. I like Apple, but I don't like that chart. <clears throat> FBIN, Fortune Brands. This has been on my list for a while. That's shown a potential buy set up there in the weekly chart. That would have to prove to me that it can get over this area, maybe over 72, before I would consider that trade. So that's one to watch or put on a daily chart or watch list. 
upbound group looks um, like a weak uptrend. If that could get some momentum to it, that's a possibility. Late, 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 stage one. Possible early stage two. HGBL Heritage Global. Late stage two and a possible early stage four downtrend. See, there's quite a bit of selling on that one. And consolidating at the bottom of this red candle is usually a bad sign. So, BREX Barracks Imaging looked good and then had earnings sold off a little bit. Now, if that could turn up, that might be a possibility in the future, not right now. Angie stands for Angie's List, I think that's. Still late stage one or even a continuation of downtrend, Angie Bots is the ETF, robotic ETF. That looks like late stage two or possible continuation of an uptrend after sell-off or more selling. So that doesn't look that great. Marble, again, I had a nice move up, but then it's recently been selling off. Keep watching that one. <clears throat> I'll watch these stocks for months. I don't care. Days, weeks, months. I'll, I'll watch them for a long time until I'm ready to buy. It's really awesome about the stock market. Um, Warren Buffett comp compared looking at the stock market to baseball when he said that in, in investing, there are no called strikes. Right? You can look at 100, 200 companies at a time and never take a strike. You don't have to take a strike. You can just... Watch and wait till you're ready. So keep looking. Um, I think this video is probably getting a little bit too long. I don't know if I'm going to make it through the end of this list because I think my voice is going to go. But I hope that helps you out with trend analysis. Maybe looking for your setup. Or if you want to use mine, that's you're welcome to do that. I don't have any uh, you know proprietary setups. It's just what I've learned over the years. Um, I'm just going to keep going through these real quick. Riot also sold off. Back to the bottom of the range. Banco Santander Brazil. This is a Brazilian company. Recent bank sell off in Brazil. Take Two Interactive. Um, I've heard of this company. I don't know how profitable they are. I haven't looked at that, but that chart looks like it got. Um, bought up pretty quick and now it's sold off but that if that can continue higher over the next few weeks that would be a consideration over you know 150 151 take two cvs company right retail um pharmacy sell off after earnings that looks lower ff company future fuel looks lower i'm always looking for these giants any candle that size has to be, you have to pay attention to that size candle. That is, whether it's red or green, these range expansion candles really tell a big, or a big part of the story, I'll put it that way. HQI looks lower, possible short idea. IPG looks lower. Block, late, late stage one, ETF, um, that can make a turn higher, I would consider that. Commercial Vehicle Group looks um, more like a Stage 3 transitioning to a Stage 4. That doesn't look that great. <clears throat> Go Health looks Stage 1, even lower. <clears throat> ARHS R House. That looks like um, it kind of made a move up and now it's selling off. And that's the fear of, of this type of chart is if this big red candle, you know, after an event, right, after earnings, and that kind of comes up, and it gets up here, and now you're like, wow, that looks like that could go higher, right? And then they sell off, right, because it's in a spot where all of a sudden sellers decide to take it lower. And that's the danger with buying too late after a big move down. Dual 
stands for Duolingo Corp. I think, I think that's one of the world's most popular language apps. I've tried it. it it's really pretty cool. It actually works pretty good. Um, I like it. I like the company. I don't think they earn money. I think that's the problem. But chart-wise, it looks um, in a range right now. CNC, Centene Corp looks lower. I hope you guys can hear my voice. Right, this chart's been up here for like five seconds. I immediately, in my mind, say, you know, that looks lower. Right, it's just, you get into, after a while, you look at so many charts, you're like, immediately, you're like, nah, I'm not interested. It looks lower. Right. I hope, well, hopefully this helps you guys out with how I use my analysis and my confidence in saying that, you know, like this chart looks lower, right, immediately. I can say this is not something I'm, I'm interested in right now. I was interested in it, and now I'm not, which is why it's on this list. GFL, it stands for GFL Environmental. That looks lower. Invesco Mortgage Capital, stage one sideways trend. Uh, I thought this would have more of a bounce to it with you know, the strange thing is about mortgages right now is even though rates are up, there's still an alleged housing shortage and like they can't build homes fast enough. So it's like something's got to give in the housing market. That's what's weird about it. I mean, we got home building stocks that are on a tear this year and mortgage companies aren't doing much. So there's something not right with that. But this one's not moving yet. McCormick and Company looks lower. EPR Tapestry, it's been on my list for a while, so I consolidated, consolidated, got tight, and then out of that consolidation, right, they can keep consolidating, or they can start to move up, or they can move down. Again, here's here's an example where it moved down out of consolidation. So Stocks move both ways out of a consolidation. That looks lower. Finally, we made it through the list, right? So 100 companies. This looks right now bottom of the range. So if that turns around or goes lower, that's it, guys. I'm going to um, go back to the slideshow. And again, thank you for um, watching. Thank you for um, subscribing to this channel. And thank you for uh, liking and sharing this channel with others that are interested in the stock market. And let's wrap it up there. That will conclude our September video. I'll see you guys <clears throat> in uh, October. I think October I'm going to continue the series on uh, maybe covered calls and cash secured puts. I apologize that I said I'd do that this month, but I just felt that um, this was the topic that was in my brain. And that's what I wanted to share with you this month. I hope that helped. Thank you. Bye.